السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم My dear respected elders and my beloved brothers and sisters Today I'm here to express my opinion about the, uh, the Burmese democracy struggle in Burma I am speaking in my individual capacity. I'm not a Rohingya leader or anything like that. This is purely my personal views based on what I have personally experienced and what I have learned in throughout this struggle for human rights in Burma, human rights in Burma. Now, before I go into my topic I would like to express my feelings about the protesters on the street my heart goes out to those who are suffering at the hands of Burmese military dictatorship or junta uh, this junta is also the res responsible for genocide of Rohingya population in Burma. My dear respected elders and brothers and sisters, I am moved, I am moved by the courage and determination of the common Burmese people who are out on the street to protest against this tyrant democracy. Sorry, I think this is a construction sites. Sorry for that. And it is crucial, it is crucial for everyone to support this movement. It is crucial for international community to step up to finish more than half a decade, sorry, half a century of Burmese tyranny, Burmese military tyranny in Burma. And I also believe that people's wills must be respected. Although I personally do not think Aung San Suu Kyi or NLD for that matter is a trustworthy politician or political party I still respect the will of the majority Burmese people who elected her as a leader of the country and NLD as a party to govern them I respect that and for that we must also respect the will of people and the uh, democratic right to choose the leader, their leader. Now, my topic here is not only human right or democracy in Burma, but also the rights of all the minorities, including the Rohingyas who are the most persecuted people in the world according to the UN and many human rights agencies UN and countries has or have described the atrocities against Rohingya are mounted to genocide 
And there is an ongoing case in ICJ at the moment, which Aung San Suu Kyi shamefully, shamefully, really very shamefully, went to defend indefendable or undefendable or atrocities, a crime against humanity that has, you know, committed by the junta. And she was complicit in this process. My respected viewers here, Currently, there is a, a rhetoric, or let's say an argument, is that let's come together in, as a one united voice to oppose military regime, to put an end to the military regime, and support democracy support NLD to bring democracy and to change the country from the dictatorship to the democratic nation, democ a nation of democracy. Now, this is not the first argument and this rhetoric or narrative or argument, if you like, is, are not the first or new argument. These was the same argument, the same narrative was used when we as a Burma, the whole of Burma, were fighting against British colonial rule. Now, back then, the narrative was, let us fight against the colonial rule of British. When we get rid of them, when we gain independent, we will sort out our problems. We will sort out our internal problems. In that light, it was Obviously, uh, the minority groups were not very convinced. Therefore, Pinlong Sa Shok was called, also known as Pinlong Agreement. The, the summary of agreement, I'm not going to go into the whole history of uh, the Burma. I had to give this uh, background so that you understand my argument a little bit. Was came to an existence, the Pilong argument, the, the, the essence of Pilong argument is, you know, all the, the hill uh, tribes, or less the, uh, the upper Burma or northern Burma, and the, the, the other ethnic minorities will be given full autonomy within 10 years. After independent, the Burmese supremist government not only ignored the agreement but also put additional pressures to persecute the minorities throughout Burma. As a result, today more than 100 ethnic minorities group have taken up arms against the domination of Burmese. Now, one might argue, no, this was against the military. My dear respected viewers here, when I say Burmese, I do not mean Burmese fishermen, Burmese farmers, Burmese workers, Burmese traders, Burmese students, Burmese teachers, Burmese professionals, 
Burmese intellectuals and Burmese religious leaders. No. What I mean is Burmese elite, political elite, and those who influence the politics and policies in Burma. And the racist and supremacist, if you are a common a commoner, common Burmese person, but you are racist, you are you are xenophobic, and you are uh, supremacist, then obviously you are also I'm targeting you as well. I mean I'm referring you as well in this uh, conversation and this topic. So, the first narrative, let me recount again. Before independence of Burma, let us fight the big common enemy and we will sort out our internal problems. The reality is our internal problem is never sorted. In fact, the Burmese domination and the Burmese uh, the military uh, domination and atrocities against minority were mounted to, in some cases, ethnic cleansing and genocide. Okay, let's talk about NLD's uh, formation of NLD and NLD's policy. After 1988 popular student movement, NLD came to existence and it, there was a promise of election in 1990 and obviously many ethnic minorities has hoped, you know, they had, uh, they thought NLD will bring real democracy and therefore we should support NLD. And a group of Rohingya leaders also went to speak with the representative of NLD, including Aung San Suu Kyi. Their request was that we will support NLD, all our votes will go to NLD, but can you promised can you promised our nationality right which has so which was revoked by the Nguyen dictator ship government Nguyen government back then Aung San Suu Kyi said the same thing let us deal with bigger problem. We will talk about smaller problems later. Okay. We went to the election. Unfortunately, the, the, the Burmese uh, Tan Shui cook the power again and then put the elect, all the elected leaders in in house in uh, in in prison, including many 88 generation, we call it 88 student generations. Uh, uh, you know the uh, the leaders of the movement were also put in prison. Now, when this pseudo democracy. Uh, you know, was re reintroduced in 2010 with the 2008 constitution. The narrative was again the same from NLD saying that let us get into the government and we will talk about the minority rights and the rights of minority group and NLD government came into the power in 2015 
and 2016 there was a mass killing of Rohingya people occurred and 2017 a mass exodus the largest refugees refugee camp in the world at the moment it's a Rohingya refugee camp in Bangladesh and Aung San Suu Kyi as I earlier said shamefully defend the army's atrocities so my dear respected viewers here can we trust Aung San Suu Kyi she is still saying or the leaders of the movement at the moment are saying okay let's deal with the bigger problem and we will solve the internal problem later you know what's the problem with that let me give you an analogy uh, in the time of Romans, you know, everybody knows gladiators, the blood sports. The justification for putting slaves against other slaves to kill each other and as a form of entertainment for the Roman people, for the Roman public, was that even if we kill one or two slaves, it is justifiable for the larger uh, ecstasy or amusement or entertainment of the larger Roman population. And to me, it sounds the same. The, the arguments of Aung San Suu Kyi sound the same to me or NLD or the the 80th generation leaders who put Rohingya as a scapegoat or sacrificial lamb for the greater benefit of Burmese people. In 2012, when again Burmese military led Mercica against Rohingya people has occurred in 2012, over 140,000 the Rohingyas were internally displaced and living in internally displaced camps until today, after eight years. 88th generation leader Ming Ko Nai shamelessly, ignorantly, I do not have, have any better word to describe this man, said we do not have Rohingya in this country. We never had Rohingya in the history of this country. Now, the existence of Rohingya is undeniable it's on their face for example the Burmese uh, encyclopedia which was printed in 1964 I think it was after uh, uh, Nguyen uh, military detail you know ships uh, after the coup military coup in 1962 so in, in 19 64 it is written Rohingya and this description was given I'm not going to go into that description right now and also first Burmese president after independent uh, Sashui Taik the, the uh, Shan ethnic has said if Rohingyas are not the ethnic of Burma then we cannot claim as an ethnic of Burma. This man, so-called 88 generation leader, who are known for their fight for the democracy and human rights in Burma, has ignorantly claimed that there was they never had there were in a history we never had Rohingya in our country. This tells me 
or for this reason how can we trust or believe a leader like this this leader either is ignorant of his own population in his country or he is racist xenophobic and genocide complicit and this is the large group this is the the view you know the rohingyas are not part of burma is held by larger uh, groups of democracy movement activists including those who are living in western countries who enjoy liberal democracy the system of liberal democracy when it's come to burma very selective human right rights they want yes the burmese elites activist and xenophobics want democracy in burma for burmese only human rights for burmese only equal opportunities for burmese only for this reason i ask the concerned members of the community international community and the in, in, ngos is aung san suu kyi and nld trustworthy or the public the ethnic community must the ethnics of uh, burma must ask this question okay we all want the end of military dictatorship so what is next okay the military will be gone and then another military like regime will come with different names different level and different strategy to continue to enslave ethnic minorities and religious minorities therefore we must not be fooled again we have been fooled again and again and again and again in over 70 years this time we must come together with burmese elite and concern community international community those who are sincere in their fight or in their you know in their stand in their belief about human right democracy and freedom transcending about all the ethnics or religious or other tags purely for humanity purely for humanity our argument should be only for humanity regardless of their background regardless of their religion regardless of their ethnic regardless of the way they look the god regardless of the what the language they speak my stand is clear we cannot trust burmese elites burmese politicians and xenophobic 88 generation leaders we cannot trust them yet i understand really i understand that we need to come together to fight against this evil we want to fight against this evil yes we want to fight against this evil but we want your undertaking in public and in writing that when we you know uh 
get rid of this tyranny, this uh, military regime, we will have this for everyone. Equal right for everyone, including Rohingyas. Equal opportunity and even, you know, equal in equality in the, uh, the in the, in the, in policy making and, and the, in leading the country. For this reason, again, I also want to encourage the in, the ethnic communities in Burma to come together to f to talk out the differences to find out how can we move forward with genuine, genuine democracy, not pseudo-democracy, not Aung San Suu Kyi likes the way Aung San Suu Kyi is uh, democracy, no. What can, you know, what is, what kind of democracy we want? Do we want majority domination dominate majority rule or we want equality in the country for the rohingya specifically when there is when you are in a situation your government is unwilling to or unable to as the NLD claimed you must protect yourself in any means necessary if Burmese society in large say no we do not want Rohingyas in our society then we must separate we must separate from the society that do not want us. Bear in mind though, we never came to Burma. No, 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 no. That's a false narration. They say, oh, they came to Burma illegally. That's false narration. We never went to Burma. Burmese came and invaded our nation of Arakan. They are the outsiders. They are the oppressors. They are the rapists. They are the exploiters. They are the genociders. They are the one who came and invaded our land, our ancestral land, and saying we came illegally from other country. No, we do not accept that narrative. If Burmese, fascist Burmese are not accepting us as a part of the country or the people of the country. We must separate. We must protect ourselves. Nobody's going to protect you and international community must support this. Therefore, you all know, well, I'm not going to go into all those things. Again, if a people, a government, and a nation is rejecting you, or do not want in the society, then you must separate. If they do, then they must accept us as equal citizens. No second class citizen just because of our religion or our ethnicity. My dear respected viewers, I respect and you know, I really uh, 
really see uh, you know it's moved as I said the uh, the courage and determination of young Burmese people who are fighting for humanity and democracy in Burma against military dictatorship if that is not you know if your struggle is only for Burmese and you are denying the existence of Rohingya then your struggle is in vain you are no better than the military you are just a pretty face of the tyranny you are a pretty shield of the tyranny you are you are another tyranny hope you understand this is uh, I would like to conclude by saying please please join the movement with the clear intention to bring humanity to bring justice to bring real and inclusive democracy for all for everyone thank you very much for watching